For more than a month now, many of the things that I would have predicted going into this pandemic would not eventually be boiled down to purely partisan culture war sort of considerations. Much of it has. And uh, that's where we're at, where even something as simple as wearing a mask to stop yourself from, you know, infecting someone with coronavirus has become a badge of honor for some. Um, we also have in that movement business leaders who have defied stay-at-home orders to reopen their businesses prematurely that are now being held up by many on the right, especially Fox News, as heroes of the movement. And joining us now to talk about that and the wider phenomenon we're currently experiencing, Editor-at-Large uh, for Media Matters for America, Parker Malloy. Welcome back to The Damage Report. It's good to be here. It's good to have you back on. I've uh, appreciated Media Matters' work uh, during all of this, your recent analysis of how rarely the death count has been mentioned on Fox News over the past few weeks is uh, required reading, I think. It's just mind-blowing. Uh, but thank you for joining us. And uh, you had another article about the business leaders that have, you know, like, yes. reopened their, their businesses against the law. Uh, to tell us about that, about the rise of this uh, class of folk hero. Sure, sure. Well, yeah, that, and that's that's really what it is. It's, it's this idea that there are these conservative folk heroes who are defying the oppressive government putting, uh, you know, putting these, these sorts of restrictions in place that keep their businesses shut down. And one that they, they've been kind of turning to. So there's this woman in Texas named Shelly Luther. So she owns a salon. And so what happened was Governor Greg Abbott in Texas put out a, an order, just like a lot of other states, uh, shutting down businesses that weren't essential and telling people to please stay home, which is honestly kind of surprising that he did that because he's, he's a very conservative governor. But so anyway, so he does this, uh, Shelly Luther shuts her salon down, but then after a few weeks, it's just like, I'm just going to reopen. So she reopens it. Uh, she, she reopens her salon and then, uh, she gets told, shut it down by a judge and she refuses. And so the judge says, if you don't shut it down, I'm going to need to, to sentence you to jail for contempt of court because I, you're violating an order. Mm -hmm. And so she still refuses. And at that point she's sentenced to seven days in, in jail and conservatives now have their new like folk hero in, in her. And so you had Texas Republicans like Greg Abbott, uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Dan Patrick, the Attorney General Ken Paxton, they're all speaking out on her behalf in favor of her. Now, mind you, again, this was Abbott's own order that she was violating. Yeah. Um, which seems a little odd, but they just kind of went with it. Um, but but so what happens here is that she she got out and she she started appearing on Hannity and Tucker Carlson and stuff like that. It was a it was a big story for a few days, and they've they've kind of moved on to different figures. But what happened here is very common. It's it's something you see on on the right a lot. You see this need for a a Rosa Parks type figure, which it's a ridiculous comparison, but it's one they yeah. keep making. Um, you know, where you have someone like Clive and Bundy or um, that Duck Dynasty's Phil Roberts or uh, Kim Davis, Kim the, Davis, yes, uh, Kentucky, yeah, the Kentucky clerk who wouldn't uh, issue marriage licenses to gay couples. You know, it's like so you've got these people who what they do is they they break the law or they they receive some sort of punishment in some way, which was the Duck Dynasty uh, situation where the, the show got pulled off the air for a couple weeks or something like that. And they're, they act like they're oppressed. They get treated like they're oppressed. And they go on and they make, you know, a ton of money on, you know, appearing on Fox and speaking at conservative events and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. Shelley Luther raised $500,000 on GoFundMe. Um, wow. she said she needed to reopen her salon because she needed to feed her family. But then people later found out that she applied for like for a loan from the government that was, you know, in the CARES Act. She got the money, but she she still still felt the need to reopen. Yeah. Um, so it's it's well, it's it's kind of a, uh, a, a scam in a sense. 
the the incentives are certainly there that you know yeah. especially if if it, if it's fairly clear that the right is looking for these sorts of figures as at all times they effectively are i'm glad that you pointed out that it was abbott's order that she turned against i have found it very <laughs> weird that you have that particular case you have the general case that trump wants credit for telling governors to lock down but also has been going around the country saying that blue states that have locked down are tyrannical regimes which is sort of weird. But then also you have um, them saying these businesses should be able to open because these are their businesses. It's their property. They can do whatever they want. But at the same time, they support people saying that businesses shouldn't be able to restrict people who don't wear masks from coming in, which is sort of weird. It doesn't seem like it's their property, their rules. In that case, there really does seem to be a desire to want to have their Corona cake and eat it too in all ways. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I mean, it's 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 chaos, which I would expect nothing less in a, in a pandemic. You've, you've, you've got basic chaos. Um, y you know, tr there's this this thing I keep seeing people say, on you know, on the right saying that, oh, well, well, Democrats want uh, want things to fail, want, the, you know, want the economy to tank. So it hurts Trump as as though there are governors out here who are like hey, i'm going to i'm going to tank my economy and, <laughs> and hurt my own political chances in the future just to just to hurt trump like that's not how yeah. it works no but it, it, I, be, behind all of this it, it makes perfect it makes perfect sense to to do this thing where they just keep throwing out information and seeing what sticks because yeah. what they need you know the the facts of the matter are very 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 bad for them you know, it's you've got 100,000 people who are dead. You've got 40 million people who are now out of work. Little progress has been made on anything. and We don't really know what's coming next. So you need to appeal to their emotions. So as much as someone like Ben Shapiro will say, you know, facts don't care about your feelings. Mm -hmm. They are focused so purely on feelings, on finding a hero, on finding anecdotal evidence to support how they feel, um, that they that they do this stuff, and because otherwise it would be really depressing for them, yeah. uh, it, because it it's genuinely depressing for everyone yeah. to to come to come face to face with those uh, realities, and and their reaction is so like they're they have to react to the Trump that they had, but if Trump had <laughs> been strong, if he had put billions into PPE and ventilators immediately, if he'd locked down two weeks earlier, if he had done all of what we want, they would have been holding him up as a hero, not someone who's like running the constitution through a paper shredder. It's just so obviously yeah. responding to the political reality and not any sort of honest expression of either their, either their ideology or their values. It just seems so see-through at this point. Right. Well, and, and there's there's another video we made over at Media Matters, which was just a collection of, you know, a super cut of times on Fox News recently where they've said, well, every death is tragic. But and, mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of been the attitude where it's they, they feel like they need to pay lip service to to the fact that, you know, there there are a lot of people who are dead now because yeah. of this virus. And it was always going to be the case that some people were going to die from this. I think we all we all knew this. And if if it was a much, much lower, you know, if, if 10,000 people died, which is obviously still horrible. But if 10,000 people died, no one no one would be saying Trump is responsible for for those 10,000 people be, because it would have been people would have acknowledged that that that's the best that yeah. you can do. But this has so clearly been so mishandled that at, at this point, everyone's just kind of throwing their hands up and, and hoping for the best. Yeah. And, you know, so as my last question, I want to sort of get, get to that a bit because you, you all at Media Matters have been doing a great job of tracking Fox News from the very beginning, who have in one flavor or another disregarded the pandemic in advance of it the early calls for more ppe etc you can fill it all in they keep changing it but one the one thing that i find to be scariest isn't necessarily the you shouldn't socially distance the masks aren't necessary stuff it's tucker carlson night after night doing shows about how um i don't think there's any evidence that the lockdowns mattered at all that they weren't necessary and it seems to me that if you tell people um continuing the lockdowns is tyranny and also, wink, wink, they were never necessary. 
what happens if a second wave comes or if another pandemic comes? Maybe Trump loses, you have Biden, and then another Corona, Corona 21 or whatever comes someday. Yeah. You know, I wonder, have they created an environment where we will be unable to get people to abide by the same sort of things that, that saved lives this time? I, I mean, I, I think the issue with that is that this is it's it's a carryover from from something that happened uh, from from the cu- entire culture that was built before this even started. And it's it's something that I kind of saw in researching a different piece that I was working on about how YouTube misinformation is still out there, where as soon as this thing hit, YouTube wanted to kind of flip a switch and be like, OK, we're going to stop this, stop misinformation from spreading. But you can't you can't just do that when when you've built a culture that incentivizes um, conspiracy theories and misinformation and things that are just purposely incendiary. I, and, and I think that the Fox News audience is, is kind of in that headspace where they just whatever, you know, whatever liberals do or the left do, they want to do the opposite of it. We've, we've gotten to that point where peop- now you see businesses saying things like if you're wearing a mask, you're not allowed in. 100 percent. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Or there's you know, a the, restaurant I, chain. Just, that's pointless it, political stuff. Yeah, they're saying that like libs are going out there wearing masks as virtue signaling. Well, then what the hell are yeah. you doing? There was I forget the the restaurant group. But there's a restaurant group in Texas that told its workers they're not allowed to wear masks because because it'll send the wrong signal. Anyway, yeah. Um, well, and and also also the fact that that, that Republicans seem to want to carve out ex- exemptions for businesses to make sure that they can't be sued in case their customers or their employers get sick, which is another example of kind of a cognitive, you know, disconnect because you wouldn't need that if it was actually safe to go yeah. to go outside and return to things. You only need that because you know it's not. <laughs> that is a great that is a great point. Your first priority would not be the legal protections yeah. if that wasn't on the front of your mind that it's probably going to happen and is currently happening in meatpacking plants that are now restricting mm-hmm. access to information about the spread. Um, yeah, uh, people need to know what messaging is coming out on the right, but mm-hmm. exposing yourself to all of that could drive you mad. So thank you to Media Matters for doing <laughs> it for us. Everybody needs to go to Media Matters and benefit from the mental and emotional sacrifice that you're all making on a daily basis. Parker Malloy, thank you, as always. Thanks so much. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.